Hey everyone, it's the Angry Honey Badger, and it's time for us to take a look at another champion build video. We are going to be looking at how to play LeBlanc today in middle lane. Um, it's a pretty standard place where you'll see her. Um, you might see her a little bit as a support because she can do it actually okay. It's uh, kind of interesting how it works, but going to be playing her mid. Just going to help leash real quick. Um, LeBlanc's a pretty fun champion to play once you get the hang of her. She can do a lot of damage. She's an extremely high burst champion. And so we're going to concentrate on how to get the most out of her really high burst potential. And we'll talk about some of the benefits to that and some of the negative uh, effects to that as well. At level 1, what I do is start with a Doran's Ring. Um, you can start with whatever combination of things you want. Um, I like it on her because we're going for damage. It's going to give me a little health and some sustain in the lane as well. And at level 1, we also take your Q ability. Um, and we'll go ahead and talk about all of her abilities and everything right now too real quick. Get those out of the way. First off, her passive is called Mirror Image. Whenever you dip below 40% health, um, you instantly become stealth for half of a second. And then your stealth fades and it creates a mirror image of yourself that you can move around. Um, it will attack... Um, it does have some less health, but uh, what's going to happen then with that is it's kind of like a it's like a Shaco ultimate kind of a thing. It's uh, at least just going to be a distraction. There's mine. You could just see just pop back up. I'm having it just chase after her before it, you know, dies. But uh, that is on a one minute cooldown, and uh, that's just what her passive is. So you can kind of trick people with it whenever you get low. Now then, as for her Q ability, which we did take at level one, um, that is your uh, Sagil of Silence, I think is what it's called off the top of my head. Um, basically, whenever you throw an orb towards them, you're going to deal some damage. Um, this is all magic damage. And um, you're going to mark the target for three and a half seconds. If the target takes damage from one of your other abilities, then um, it's going to be triggered dealing more damage, and then it's also going to silence them for two seconds. So you kind of want to team this up with another uh, thing right after you hit them with it. Um, because then you are going to silence them and deal that initial da or more damage. So that's what that does. Then as for uh, your W, which is what we put a point in at level 2, um, that is your distortion. Um, you're going to rapidly move to a target location. You're going to deal a lot of damage when you do this as well. Um, uh, the following three seconds, you can activate it again to return to that starting location. So you can kind of jump forward, maybe hit them with some spells, and then jump back safely. So it's kind of good for uh, flashing through walls. You can kind of use it to do that. Or you can trick people by going one direction. If they go to chase you, you can click it, and then you'll be back on the other side of them. So you can see um, some tricky plays with this. We'll see me using this in the game as well. And we take that at level two. Then at level three, you put one point in your E ability, which is your chains. Um, you're going to fling out this chain. What happens is when it hits them, it is going to deal some damage. Um, and then if it's on them long enough, it does slow their movement speed as well. But if it's on them for, I believe, two seconds, then it will then um, bind them down and deal some more damage as well. And uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. So that's it's going to do a few other things too. And uh, it's pretty it's pretty great. Now, at this point, we have our ultimate, which we will talk about in a second. But at level 6, basically, you want to get to the point where you just burst them down like what I did. And we'll talk about exactly how that happened. Um, basically, our ultimate is called Mimic. And LeBlanc can mimic the last cast that she just used um, based off of any of her other spells. And um, it's going to deal increased percentage of damage. And that's how we bursted her down so fast. Now, here... Hecarim was going to jump me. I can jump around a little bit. I'm dealing damage to him. I got stuck under that turret for a second. Luckily, Trundle's going to run up and finish him off. And Red Buff is then going to kill um, Hecarim. So I will pick up an assist on that. So uh, it was pretty low. But as you could see, when he did come in to dive me, because I hit him with that Q ability and then some other abilities, I was able to then activate the Q, um, that little um, passive on it. And he was silenced. So he couldn't do any more damage for those two seconds to me. So um, I did some significant damage quick. And luckily, Trundle was able to pick that kill up for himself. And I got myself an assist. But going back to um, how to basically blow people up, once you get back to lane, you kind of just want to keep repeating um, your combination, whichever way you like the most. I personally, if I'm not all up in their face, I will jump to them with my W, my, distor uh, my distortion, then I will throw my Q at them, and then I will mimic my Q again, because that is your main damage. We'll be maxing out our Q first, and then you basically mimic that back to them which is your ultimate, and that's going to deal even more increased damage on top of that, and that is why you usually explode, and it looks like uh, LeBlanc casts her uh, Q ability twice. That is what's happening. As you can see, Hecarim was there, and I just kind of threw it back at him. You can see how low he got that fast. So um, here we're going to use our distortion again, throw another Q at him. That will pick up a kill, and then I jumped back 
um, to its location with that uh, W to get kind of out of that turret range a little bit quicker since I was taking that tower after I went in for that kill. So that's just kind of how her abilities work back and forth. Basically, I try to jump in with my W, throw a Q at them, then throw the ultimate at them, then throw your E at them, which will hopefully deal damage to them and stun them. And in that time, if it does, then grab them like this using it right now. You can throw one more Q at them. Hopefully that'll be off of cooldown after you move use all of your abilities. So um, you can obviously mimic any of your other abilities. If you want a lot of support, LeBlancs will mimic her E ability which um, will then basically let you stun them twice. So you will be slowing them, and then you'll kind of grab them, and then you'll slow them again if you want to mimic it. So there's lots you can do. You can also do this with your distortion if you want to jump around the map really fast, um, get through walls, or just kind of gap close incredibly quick if you just need to hit somebody uh, with maybe a Q and an Ignite to finish them off. But I typically try to save the Mimic shot for what you just used was your Q. And once again, your Mimic is whatever the last spell you used. So if you throw a Q at them and then you jump with Distortion forward and then you want to you wanna hit them one more time with that Q, you're basically going to just jump again because that was the last move was your Distortion. So that's just how our abilities work. Obviously, um, it takes a little bit of time to get used to and you will continue to get better at how you use all of her abilities jumping around. It just It's all a little bit unique and new. Um, this game you'll see me miss a few because I, everything on SmartCast, I SmartCast a couple of minions a few times just, just barely basically missing my target. So you do have to be careful not to overuse them too quickly. So I think learning her abilities down and getting down the combination or just the feel of them is really, really important when you are playing LeBlanc. Now going back to the items that we are building early on, what I like to do with LeBlanc, because she does so much damage with this Q ability being your mimic, and or yeah, with your Q doing tons of damage, we're maxing out your Q ability first, by the way. Um, and then basically we mimic that with your ultimate every single time they get tons of damage. We wanna rush full damage items, LeBlanc works best this way. Now, luckily, LeBlanc, a lot of people might think she's really overpowered when she's played well. It's because she does scale like this and it does look like she does tons of damage, which is right, she does. But an unfortunate thing about LeBlanc is she takes tons of damage really easily her passive is not amazing, it's okay, but she falls off pretty hard late game because she's a little cooldown reliant, but you can't really fix that um, perfectly. I don't want to say you rely on having your ultimate up to kill things, but it is very, very helpful and very useful. Obviously, you shouldn't just rely on your ultimate to kill, but um, that is just one thing that I like to use. Luckily, it is on a short cooldown, but in a team fight, what you really want to do is eliminate the high priority target, and then that is basically what's going to help you finish out um, teams and end games quickly, because I don't think you really want to take LeBlanc into a late game situation once they start building plenty of health or magic resist, you're really not going to be able to burst champions down quite as easily if they are going to be building, you know, health and magic resist. So, um, she doesn't really keep poking back and forth. What you do is you jump in, you blow them up with everything you got, and then hopefully the team fight's pretty much ended or you're in a position to push. So, um, she's not really the world's greatest just continuous brawler because that's not really what her kit supports. So, um, with LeBlanc, we build lots of high damage items early to try to finish games fast. So uh, luckily, you're going to do that this game. As you can see, keep jumping in. I hit her with a few things and ignited her, so she will die to the ignite. Um, five kills so far, no deaths. This is typical LeBlanc stuff most of the time if you get ahead. Um, you kind of continue to snowball and just pick up a little bit more speed as the game goes on. The first item we did build was that death cap, which was putting me at about 250... Um, AP, because I did have a Dorn's Ring as well, and then plus the Runes and Mastery setup, which was helping me get that extra damage and then um, helped me with the passive from um, the Death Cap. I also did go with Magic Penetration Boots. You're probably going to want those. Um, you could go cooldown reduction if you really wanted to, but we're going for maximum damage is really what we're going for. And then um, if you need to stack a couple Dorn's Rings early, you can do that if you need to. If you fall behind with LeBlanc early, maybe pick up a Haunting Guys. Here we're going to use Distortion go through this wall to find Nidalee. Going to hit her with a Q and then the Alt. And then we're just going to jump back to the wall by activating our uh, Distortion one more time. Get away from that Morgana. So um, pretty easy way to get away from a fight. Just jump through walls, murder somebody, jump right back through. So you can do that. Here Mordekaiser finds four of them and he's going to blame me for not helping, but... There's not a really a lot a LeBlanc can do there against four people. That's just a great way to die. Um, he gets all angry about it. Kind of funny. But um, early on, if you're having a little bit of trouble, you might want to pick up a Haunting Guys. It'll give you some health. It'll give you some uh, magic penetration, and um, it will give you AP as well. So you can pick that up early and then finish that off into a Leandri late if you want to do that. Um, I don't always build that item. Another item I will talk about is um, the... Uh, what, what do we want to talk about? Actually, we're getting a little bit of a fight. Just going to blow up Morgana again real quick because, you know, you can do that. It's not too tough. 
Um, but yeah, like I was saying, if you want to have a couple more Doran's Rings early, you can do that. If you want to build that Haunting Guys up, you can do that as well. It kind of comes down to personal preference, but we're going to be building more um, items that just give us damage overall because, like I said, we want to get as much AP as fast as we can early, and that's why we went with Death Cap first. Going to jump in, deal some damage. I'm going to have to uh, jump out a little bit. Got some rings on me and was exhausted by the vein and all slow, didn't really want to die. Um, we're going to kind of push back and forth here a little bit. Going to make some bad decisions in a second, but it's mostly because we're pretty fed and at this point we're not really too, too worried about it. Um, but we'll talk about that in a second. Now, I know a lot of people ask me why I don't build, um, or at least they don't see them in the build videos, why I build any of the items that uh, stack whenever you get kills. And uh, there's a great one for LeBlanc, obviously, the AP one. Where you could do that. Oh, here's here's that awesome dying. I go in for um, the Morgana, but I do get knocked away by Vayne, so I was unfortunately uh, unable to pick that kill up. But um, I don't usually buy those because they're very situational, and for a few reasons, uh, I have problems with those items. Like, as much as it can give you the most AP out of any item in the game when it is fully stacked, when you have all 20 stacks, the biggest issue you run into is people start to focus you because you have that item. Um, you're already going to get focused because you're LeBlanc and you do tons of damage, but one reason you might not want to pick it up is you'll get focused. Now, if you get really ahead, yeah, it might be worth your time to pick one up, um, but, you know, you just got to be careful about that and why people might do that. Um, at this point, we are obviously still picking up more AP. We got another needlessly large rod and that codex. Those two will be teaming up eventually to be building a... Uh, oh, we got a little bit of a fight going. Ash is there. Gonna uh, use everything. That'll silence Jack. This will slow him down and lock him in place, and Ash will pick up that kill. But um, like I was saying, next we're building even more damage. We're gonna be picking up a Death Fire Grasp. I know some people like to get this first, but, you know, I like the Death Cap because it'll give me overall, more overall damage right away at the beginning of the game. Um, but we will have this Death Fire Grasp as our next item, and then obviously the passive on that, we can use that to help uh, blow targets up as well. This will definitely help out LeBlanc because uh, if they're a little bit beefier and you use everything and it doesn't kill them, hopefully your Death Fire Grasp will help with that as well, and then you will be able to blow them up a little bit faster. Um, after that, then we just keep building more uh, AP items, but like I was saying, hopefully the game is getting closer to an end because she doesn't really last too well in a very late game situation, so you just have to be a little bit careful of that. Now, as for um, runes and masteries, runes are pretty standard stuff for my AP casters, at least on her, it's pretty similar. You got magic penetration marks, uh, mana regen seals, um, ability power quintessences, and then ability uh, scaling ability power per level um, glyphs is what I take. As for the masteries part, um, 2109, 21 in the offensive tree, help you out with all your AP stuff in there, and then um, 9 in the uh, what we call it, utility, which is going to help you with um, longer buff durations and some cooldowns, mana, a little bit of everything. And you can see that. Here's a team fight where what you need to do is kind of get to the high priority target and burst them down. On their team, this is going to be their Vayne who has most of the kills and is their AD carry. So what I'm going to do is, after getting stunned by Jax, I'm going to flash through this wall, then use my distortion to get closer to her, gap close, and use Mimic with my Q and ultimate to blow her up. Now she is gone, no chance to retreat, and we have the clear advantage in the team fight, so we'll be able to mop them up. We had a good initiation too, great wave from the Nami, and uh, that's definitely gonna help round things out. Now we do have that Deathfire Grasp, the next item I typically would be building is either an Hourglass or a Void Staff. At that point, I'm hoping that the game is over, but if we need to obviously take a Haunting Guys and build that into a torment, we can do that as well. But that's going to be a LeBlanc guide. If you have any questions, put those in the comments below, but I'll just see all of you in the next build video. Um, they're coming in at us. We are going to get ulted by the Sona. I'm going to ult back at TF and hit Lissandra. You can see the range on it actually. It doesn't feel like it is that long, but it really does work a little bit. I'm going to kill TF real quick, and then also kill the uh, Lissandra. Jack